I'm going to talk today about gold and more specifically gold's failure to deliver on the promise or the expectations probably that a lot of people had who currently own gold or maybe more importantly people who own gold stocks who were anticipating a gold rally and one of the reasons that a lot of people own gold is inflation we're buying gold as a hedge against inflation and now we've seen some of the worst inflation numbers we've really seen since the early 1980s or you know the 1970s yet the price of gold is kind of hovering around 1800 a little bit below as i'm speaking and gold stocks have actually been among the worst performers in fact technically in bear markets having you know to pull back at least 20 percent from their recent highs in fact if you look at many of the stocks like the gdxj which is an index of junior gold mining stocks uh that stock has been make that index rather has been making 52 week lows although it's not at a 52 week low today uh, but it has been hitting those lows despite the fact that those of us who were betting on more inflation bet right we have more inflation it's just that if you place that bet through gold stocks so far you haven't been paid and the reason for that i think is a bit ironic it's almost that gold rather than being a beneficiary of inflation is actually suffering it's a it's a, a casualty of inflation higher inflation paradoxically is actually bad for gold and in particular gold mining stocks more so than the metal itself and the question is why is that and how much longer is that paradox likely to continue because you know if you look at the inflation numbers we got inflation numbers this morning that were part of the GDP numbers. And the year over year increase is better than 6%. And that is the highest annual rate of uh, price increases measured you know, by government measures since again, the early 1980s. And if we still measured inflation today, the way we measured it back then, the number would be much worse. I mean, just take for example, rent. If we actually used real rents the rents that people are paying those of us who still are paying rent who are renting if you look at what's actually being paid versus what the government pretends that people pay when they use owner's equivalent rent which we use today but which wasn't in use in the early 1980s we would have an annual inflation rate right now north of 10 percent in fact it's possible that the last 12 months have seen a bigger increase in consumer prices than in any year during the 1970s, which is known for being the year of inflation. In fact, the 1970s really got started when inflation first peaked above 4%. And that initial move above 4% was what led Nixon to impose temporary wage and price controls, which of course did not work because wage and price controls go after the symptom of inflation, rising prices, rather than the cause, which is the uh, government or the Federal Reserve printing money. But the point is that the inflation that the government will admit to today is already 50% higher than what was so bad in the early 1970s that it caused Richard Nixon to panic and go for ways and price control. So what was a alarming rate of inflation in the early 1970s is now being brushed aside today, not only by the Federal Reserve, but also by investors. Investors don't believe that the high inflation numbers that we're seeing today are sustainable. In fact, the watchword is transitory. Everybody thinks that this is a transitory increase in consumer prices, not a permanent increase, and therefore they're not motivated to move into an inflation hedge because you don't need to hedge transitory inflation. And in fact, if inflation is not transitory on its own, the markets expect that the Fed will make the inflation transitory because Fed officials have repeatedly assured the markets with words that they will do that, that they have the tools to somehow make sure that inflation stays anchored at 2%, even though they're going to allow it 
to slightly exceed 2% in the short term, over the long run, they are determined and they are going to use their tools to make sure that inflation stays at around 2%. And it's the anticipation of using those tools that is weighing so heavily on gold and on gold mining stocks, because there is an old Wall Street adage, you don't fight the Fed. And what happens when the Fed is tightening monetary policy? Well, that's supposedly good for the dollar and bearish for gold. And if it's bearish for gold, it's even more bearish for gold stocks, which represent the present value of their future earnings. And if you expect gold prices to be even lower in the future than it is now due to the Fed tightening, well, you would see that in today's gold price, in today's gold stock price, even if you wouldn't see it in today's gold price, because the stocks are forward looking, whereas the spot gold price is not. It's just looking at what is the price today. But why do people believe Fed policy is going to be so dollar supportive? Why do they think it is going to hurt gold? Well, because traditionally, that's what happens when the Fed tightens. And so everybody assumes that this tightening cycle will be the same as all the prior tightening cycles without recognizing the huge difference between this cycle and the ones in the past. Because it's possible that this cycle will consist entirely of talk. It may not consist at all of action. And talking about tightening monetary policy is not the same thing as actually tightening it. But even if we do begin to tighten, the way that tightening is going to uh, be rolled out is going to be simply through a reduction of the amount of quantitative easing that the Federal Reserve is currently doing. And they're referring to this reduction as a taper. And it's all this taper talk that has been talking down the price of gold and therefore gold stocks and helping to talk up the dollar. But if you understand what the Fed is actually talking about doing, they're not talking about shrinking the money supply. They're not talking about reducing the size of their balance sheet. They're simply talking about increasing their balance sheet at a slower pace in the future then they're increasing it now. In other words, they're committing to creating less inflation in the future than they're creating right now, but they're still committing to creating more inflation. Inflation is an expansion of the money supply. And even if you slow down the rate by which you're expanding the money supply, you are still adding to the inflationary problem that exists. In other words, the Fed is not talking about putting out a fire. The Fed is talking about putting less kindling on the fire or throwing less gasoline on the fire. So they're, they're, they're not going to put out the fire. They're saying, look, we're just not going to pour as much gasoline on the fire as we're pouring on the fire um, right now. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest we have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. 
Become active and see you on the other side. Thank you.